Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on today's episode, we have Tom Bear. Tom is a Salt Lake City-based outdoor adventure and lifestyle photographer. His work's been featured in Outside Magazine, Men's Fitness, Muscle and Fitness, Discovery Channel Magazine, Runner's World, Outdoor Life, and a whole bunch of other magazines and publications, and we could spend all day listing his credentials. So without further ado, let's welcome Tom to the show. So welcome to the show, Tom. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, let's first, um, maybe you could describe a little bit about your photography, how you got involved in uh, outdoor photography. So can you tell people who are not familiar with your work a little bit about what you do and what you shoot? Well, um, that's a great point. I actually started in outdoor photography. Um, a friend of mine um, was a fly fishing and ski photographer, and it just looked like a lot of fun. So I picked up a camera, started shooting just as a hobby. Um, he told me I was terrible, and so about a year went by after I decided to show him a few more photos and at that point he's like oh that one's actually really good you should send it to a friend of mine at this magazine so that's exactly what I did and from then on once I got published once I just kind of got the bug and just wanted to keep shooting. Well your work has definitely become pretty amazing over the years um, and uh, you know we have a bunch of photos that you sent us and I really want to walk through these and maybe you could describe how you lit these, what gear you used, and just help people understand how you took some of these photos. So the first photo that I'd like to talk about is uh, a guy outside, it looks like uh, a trailer, and it looks like Joshua Tree Park, or there's some, at least some Joshua trees in the photos. So can you tell us a little bit about how you lit that photo, um, what it was for, just talk a little bit about that image. Sure, um, the way I did that, I, I used a, a large octobank. I lit it kind of from above, slightly in front of them, so they, uh, so the gentleman got a little bit of catch light in the eye, or not quite catch light in the eye, but a little bit of light on his face. Um, and with that one I actually had to do a little post-production. The stand was partially in the shot on the right hand side. The light was above um, the shot so it didn't cause any flare, but I had to uh, Photoshop the light out of that right hand side. Well, one of the things that people ask uh, all the time is how you balance a strobe with ambient light. So can you talk a little bit about how you uh, did that so well in this and, and some of your other shots? Uh, sure. Um, one of the things that I really like to make sure that you're kind of deciding what kind of mood you want from the photo first. A lot of the clients that I work with want something that looks really natural. So you'll tend to use ambient light, um, make it a little bit darker. So you tend to stop the background down, either a stop or a stop and a half, and then just expose for the, the right exposure on the, uh, the person with uh, your strobes. And uh, that, that tends to be kind of the basic, you know, more... Um, generic kind of look that people want. Uh, the photo that you're talking about at Joshua Tree, that tends to be a lot more um, contrasted. So I would say it's more like probably two and a half to three stops. I'm using more light on the, uh, the trailer, the actual light coming from that. You tend to shoot maybe a little bit darker um, towards dusk. Uh, helps a lot with that so you can get that darker background and, and really get that kind of um, almost overlit kind of feel to it. And uh, I, I actually like that a lot for the MMA stuff that I do and the UFC fighters that I photograph. I want it to look a really contrasty. Well, before we get to the MMA stuff and, and sort of that high contrast look that you do, there I have noticed in a few of your shots, you put yourself in a position that is, uh, it looks sort of natural when you look at the photo, but on closer inspection, it's, it's totally unnatural. Um, one is a shot where you're underwater, completely underwater, and the other is you're basically right in front of a couple motorcycles. And so let's talk about those two shots. First, can we talk about the shot where you took a picture of the gentleman who's completely submerged underwater? How did you do that? How did you keep your camera from you know, being uh, totally ruined in the water? Yeah, great. That's one of my favorite shots. I, um, I actually just bought one of these inexpensive Aua Marine uh, packs. Here's what it is. Uh, camera sticks right in there and you just make sure that you don't get any water and keep the uh, temperature kind of relatively the same so you don't get that fogging up on the inside. And uh, this has worked out great for me in a lot of the rafting photos and kayaking photos that I do where I can just put it underwater and, and not worry about it at all. Um, the nice thing about this is it's relatively inexpensive compared to um, a lot of the cases that you can buy, the hard shell cases that are really um, pricey on one end and also they're camera specific. So this one you can put any camera in there and it works great. 
Well, that's awesome. Well, let's talk about the motorcycle shot. It looks to me like it's all natural light. Um, but uh, tell us how you positioned your camera so that uh, you could get that sort of panning look, um, but moving at the same speed as, as the motorcycles themselves. Yeah, actually the, uh, the shot was photographed out of the back of a van. Um, there was two of us sitting in the back. One was shooting video and I was shooting stills. And just kind of hanging out the back side, you could get the camera almost within two or three inches of the ground as long as there's no bumps coming up. And you're able to, to shoot at slower shutter speeds since you're traveling at the same rate of speed. And it also helped that we had professional motorcycle riders that were able to get really nice and close to, uh, the, to the, the back of the van. Uh, one of the things that I found the biggest challenge with that shot was that the people that were not as good and a little bit afraid to come close to the back, um, it was just way too far. It just looked, it didn't have that really cool effect. And these guys would be within, it was pretty amazing. Some of the guys would be within like five inches of the back of the van with their front tire traveling 50 miles an hour. So uh, maybe not the most uh, safe way to do it, but they, they definitely, these guys were all professional riders and, and uh, we had the road closed and everything like that. So it, it worked out really well. That's insanity. So um, what kind of lenses did you use to have them have to be that close to the van? Well, that was definitely shot with my, uh, my 17 to, um, what is it, 17 to 35. And they, uh, that was mainly to be able to get the effect and show you the, the scenery of Keystone and the background there. Um, so a lot of the uh, photos that weren't included in here were actually even closer or kind of a little bit more um, dramatic in terms of um, the front tire being right there, but it didn't have that aesthetic that I really liked in this photo. Well, there's another shot that I, I really love, um, and it looks like also a, a wide angle lens, and it's of a, uh, a female skier under what looks like just a, a wall of ice. Um, can you talk about how you shot that? And again, how did you light that scene? Yeah, that was actually all uh, natural light. We were in a uh, in an ice cave um, in Zermatt, Switzerland. Uh, one of the neat places that I've been recently, I just got back, that was in February. Um, we were skiing down this beautiful glacier and you have to be really careful for crevasses so you're wearing, you'll notice she's wearing a harness and we carry ice axes and crampons and everything just in case something were to happen and also getting over some of the ice patches. Um, but with that, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is taking the, the exposure for the person on the inside and then just letting the background totally blow out. And you'll notice that in the background that, that white is completely blown out and that's something I don't really worry about but I want to get that almost kind of ethereal look and uh, what was really nice about that is the reflections coming up off of the bottom and all over the ice on the top really added some beautiful aesthetics to the photo. Yeah I think that's my favorite shot that you've taken it's pretty amazing. Well let's talk about your MMA fighters and uh, those guys I think stand out in your portfolio because of the, the way that you're lighting them. So um, can you talk about the lighting and also the, any post-production that you're doing on, uh, on those, those shots? Yeah, so the uh, MMA fighters I tend to try to do, there's two lighting setups that I do. Um, one of them is kind of very similar to what um, a lot of people do now is that three light setup, having kind of two lights in the back and a nice softbox or octobank in front. And that tends to be um, kind of the, the photo that I, or the lighting that I use for kind of the cover shots. Uh, some of the other lighting is I'll use two soft boxes, one uh, kind of above the camera, one below the camera, and uh, just kind of really add a, just almost no shadows kind of going on the face and then do a lot of post-production work in terms of making it a little bit more gritty looking, um, adding some desatur or taking some desaturation and uh, also adding a lot of contrast and, and uh, things like that. I really love those shots. Well, we're almost out of time, but before we go, I have one more question for you. And, and you have these uh, shots that you have of skiers outside, lots of snow, lots of white, lots of reflection, really bright scenes. And we do have quite a few people uh, writing into our show asking how to shoot in snowy situations like that. Do you have any suggestions? Are you using ND filters? How do you uh, control the exposure in an environment like that? Well, the, the thing that's wonderful about snow is that it's backlit. Um, all my photos are backlit for the most part. And what I love about that is you have this gigantic reflector. Snow um, bounces off so much wonderful light. So there's a photo on my website where there's a snowboarder jumping in the air above kind of a mountain. 
and that's 100% just reflective light off of the, um, the snow itself. So I think looking at the image, maybe not shooting um, you know, with the sun on the subject, but shooting backlit and finding you know, a, a white hill works really well. And then it's just a matter of playing around with the, the right exposure. You know, you want to make sure that you're keeping your snow white, which I think a lot of people have a tendency to, to go the wrong way where they end up um, letting their camera kind of boss them around and letting that exposure of the entire shot be a little bit too dark. So I actually shoot a lot of my shots on auto or aperture priority and I'll just set it almost to stop brighter than it's supposed to be, than the camera says. and it tends to work out pretty good. All right, Tom, we're just about out of time, but before we go, can you tell people where they can find your work, your website, your blog? Um, just tell us uh, where you are on the web. Sure, you can go to Tom Bear Photography, B-E-A-R dot com, and uh, you can see all my photos and kind of links to a lot of my work on there. Well, that's pretty simple. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really a pleasure to have you on the show. Likewise, Mark, thank you so much, and uh, good luck to you. Well, you bet. Thanks again, Tom. Well, remember, if you want to see Tom's work, just go to TomBearPhotography.com to see all kinds of amazing images. And if you love how they do that, you can go to the Adorama Learning Center to see the entire series with links to articles and all kinds of how-tos about photography. And remember, if you have a suggestion for somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, you can send your suggestion to me at AskMark at Adorama.com. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.